All right, everybody, welcome. And we have another fun conversation and discussion. And um, Beatrice Dennis is joining us again. And this is, I think, Beatrice, this is the, the quickest turnaround from the first visit to the, the second visit. Um, and if for people who remember, um, or maybe people who didn't listen to the first episode, um, Beatrice is a member of the Grand Circle Tour podcast. So that's when she was on previously talking about that. And now she's on talking about Walt Disney World at, at 50, the 50th anniversary and celebration of Walt Disney World. Um, and I wanted to bring her back on to discuss a few of the things that were going on um, with the celebration and maybe some of the things that uh, are coming in the future or that she or others would like to see coming in the future. So real quick, um, Beatrice, for people who maybe um, weren't able to listen to the, the last episode you were on, um, could you give us that quick introduction about yourself and where you started and where you are today with, um, with Walt Disney World? Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's such a pleasure to be back. I had so much fun the first time uh, in between the, the brief uh, hiatus that I had uh, in, what, two weeks? <laughs> <laughs> I had a quick Marvel Day at Sea Cruise, so that was amazing as well. Um, my love for Disney started as a child, and my very first trip here was in uh, 2000, and I say here because the Magic Kingdom is right there. <laughs> <laughs> I can literally see the fireworks from my backyard now, so I loved it so much. I had tears in my eyes leaving, and now I've moved here and made it my life, so um, I worked for Fox Television for 15 years. Um, it brought me to Florida, where I worked at Fox 35. And I always dreamed of someday working for Disney, which I did start that in January of 2020. But then March kind of slowed the whole world down in that year. And I was uh, furloughed and laid off. When they called me back, I had already started something, which was a just heart passion of mine. And I currently work for MEI and Mouse Fan Travel. And it is a wonderful just lifetime goal to be able to help people. And in the way that I can do that now, it just feels like it's meant to be. So it, it's been like my whole life leading me to this point right here. And the brief stint that I had with Disney taught me so much in helping what I do right now. You know, we create happiness, the four keys to help my guests right now. So um, it, it's been a wonderful road to lead me right here. And I feel like I'm where I've always meant to be. So it's, it's nice to be a part of Grand Circle Tour. In January, I started that little addition, which has been so much fun. The team there is wonderful. And um, we have lots of fun sharing Disney tips and tidbits and, and all of our thoughts along the way. Well, and, and thanks for that. And thanks for joining us again, um, again, in, in short turnaround. I actually do want to start with um, your overall quick reactions to the, the Marvel Day at Sea Cruise. Epic. In one word, it was epic. <laughs> I have, I love Disney Cruises. Um, since July, I've been on seven different cruises, but okay. none of them were Disney. This was my first Disney cruise after the pandemic, and the characters were everywhere. There's just, it was wonderful. We had um, the Marvel Day at Sea was the most amazing day I've ever had. I've been on Star Wars cruises. I look forward to Pixar when they come out next year, um, but Marvel was beyond my favorite. It was okay. just above all of that. Um, the Heroes Unite show where they had all the Marvel characters. This is one thing I was actually going to talk about today with Disney and I won't spoil it, but I, I love what they can do with Marvel characters at sea and would yeah. love to see more of that at Disney World if they can get the rights and everything put together. But between all of the, the characters flying in, the fireworks at sea, um, they had Mickey and Friends doing a superhero celebration. So you'd have Captain Mickey or 
actually he was Captain America, Nikki in this one. So um, he was celebrating his love for Captain America. All the, the characters had their own favorite characters like Donald was Hulk, which is my favorite. So, <laughs> so we had, it was just such an epic show between the Disney characters doing Marvel and the actual Marvel characters coming out with the fireworks celebration at sea. I would absolutely do it again, just like that. Yeah. And um, I've actually, I've yet to go on a cruise and um, I want to at some point, and I'm especially interested in the Marvel day at sea. Um, and you, you mentioned the contract and ev getting everything worked out with having those characters in Orlando. Uh, that would, that would be on my dream list if, if that could ever happen. Um, for people who don't know it, it, it it's called day at sea and they they have like the star wars they have marvel like you said they're going to have pixar but it's called marvel day at sea because um like there's there's one day where you where you don't have stops right that you are you are cruising the whole day between miami and or wherever you're taking off and the castaway k so in order to kind of fill that day with, um, and this isn't to say, I mean, the days at sea, anything that they do on a Disney cruise is amazing, I've always heard. But this is just something kind of different to fill the day that you are sailing the whole day and there's not a stop, correct? Correct. We did not have a stop. It was a whole day at sea. There were Marvel characters in the atrium. You could take photos with them. Uh, currently, it's socially distanced, so they're behind the little red, you know, rope kind of thing, and you can get a photo with them or just of them. I get, I like to get them, you know, posing in their favorite superhero pose and and that sort of thing. But there was, you know, Doctor Strange, Captain America. There was a Doctor Strange show that we got to see where he kind of tells us about being a sorcerer and we could help him. Uh, in a certain act that he had to do. And uh, there was a USO show, which was for someone who's patriotic and, mm -hmm. and kind of old school in a way, it was, it was wonderful. Captain America came out at the end of the USO show, but it started just as the way back shows used to do, mm -hmm. you know, with the old, uh, with the old music and the, the whole stage presentation. And then Captain America would come out just so many shows throughout the entire day, so many character interactions, character photos, performances, whether it was up on the pool deck. And currently right now they've got um, dots that you stand. So yeah. you're still socially distanced, even on the pool deck watching, you know, the, the show that's going on and they have multiple shows. So they do it, you know, twice and you stand in your spot and you can see it. So it felt very safe everything was great. Um, the shows were spectacular. Um, so it was one full day of, you can see all the characters and take your photos with them. Those characters, the Marvel characters are not on the ship all week long, like some of the others okay. are. Um, but on the last night, I did see a few of them back out for photo opportunities. So hmm. it was just kind of some surprises, you know, Disney likes to throw surprises yeah. out too so we had some fun surprises when I came out and saw Dr. Strange in the lobby you know <laughs> it was yeah. great. so there were some of those moments as well but they were fantastic yeah that I mean that's so much fun and then you know on top of that you go to Castaway K which um, we actually and in the class we haven't talked spoken much about um, the cruise lines and um, so at some point we'll we'll have to have a full discussion with people about Disney cruises and kind of everything that goes into it and, and Castaway K and where they go really across the globe. Um, but it, 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 it's so much fun to, to think about that. And it is like, because now we are in such a, a different time. Um, currently, I know like the, the mask mandate just got lifted, I think today. Um, at the parks but i like on the cruise lines um currently you and it seems like for the foreseeable future you you have to have uh, a negative you have to have a negative test um and or show proof of like 90 days um so are they still limiting 
capacity on the cruises or are, are those other things in place um, for the safety reasons? They are still limiting um, on the ship that we were on last week. There were approximately 900 some guests on the entire ship. Yeah. Our server told me that we had more crew on the ship than guests. Oh, wow. Okay. So, and then I thought about it, you know, you've got servers, you've got guest services, you've got, you know, all of the, the entertainment, yeah. you've got all of this. So literally 900 some guests and more, more crew than, yeah. than there. So it felt like the ship was ours. It felt like the Island was ours. Um, at Castaway Key, we actually, I ran a 5k and you can get this little virtual, uh, it's a virtual 5k but then when you cross the finish line you go up to the kiosk and you say hey I just finished they give you the medal because they they can see you come across mm -hmm. so they know you really did and um so it was fun we did that they have bicycles on the island they have floats they have all sorts of things to do there captain jack sparrow was there on the island mm -hmm. so we got some fun extra photos that we even had a pirate night on Marvel Day at Sea, which was surprising to me because I didn't know that they would do both with all the stuff going yeah. on right now. So um, it was great that we had Pirate as well as Marvel. So it was just one fantastic itinerary. Great yeah. cruise. Yeah, and you know, it, it's it's also always fascinating to me, like um, Castaway Key with the, it's just kind of the makeup of that place and, and how they're, um, how they, you know, run that, run that island for um, loads of entertainment on that island. So um, there, there will be future discussions about that because I, I'm always, I'm fascinated by it. Um, and one reason why I haven't been on a cruise yet, I think is, is I don't live um, local close to Walt Disney world. So when we go, um, I'm just such a fan of the parks that I always feel I, I want to spend time in the parks. And I've all, I've heard from many people that um, they were a little hesitant for the cruises for that reason, because they want to spend time in the parks that when they go on the cruise, it, it they're like, Oh, this is completely, it's completely fascinating and, and fun and, and changes a lot of people of a lot of people's future plans in many instances. Um, but so that that was my attempt at a segue to talk about the 50th anniversary and celebration of Walt Disney World. Um, October 1st, 1971, Walt Disney World opens primarily with the Magic Kingdom, Polynesian and Contemporary, and then the campsites. Um, and then, so October 1st, 2021 was the 50th anniversary. Um, and a lot of there, there were major plans for the, what the company was going to do for the 50th anniversary. Um, a lot of it gets postponed by the pandemic. Um, so I do want to talk about that, but before I just want to get your initial, like your overall impressions of the parks now um, since like specific to the 50th anniversary celebration what they're doing and and things that that kind of stand out for you I feel also that you know a lot of it was kind of pushed back you know we were going to have Tron and it's not quite ready yet um, I'm happy that we did get Remy so we've got that new ride we've got the um, Guardians of the Galaxy ride is Cosmic Rewind is coming soon so that's going to be during the 50th so I know that they had big, big plans. And unfortunately, the pandemic kind of slowed a lot of that down. Epcot's, um, the front of the park is a lot of construction mm -hmm. walls right now. And, and it wasn't going to be that way. I was so looking forward to Cherry Tree Lane and, you know, all these things that they had said were coming, the, the statue that's going to be coming. Um, I, my vision of the park, the impression of the parks that I have right now are just a, a lot of construction walls, but great things are coming. Um, the, the day of the 50th anniversary, I was in the park and it seemed that most people were going straight to merchandise over the rides mm -hmm. and attractions. <laughs> yeah. So 
you know, I mean, we all wanted our commemorative look. I'm wearing the ears and the shirt. I mean, we all got our commemorative stuff. We were, we either were there or wanted to be and bought the stuff, you know, that, that was kind of the, the thing for right now. Um, some of the new shows, um, they don't have the same heartfelt feel as, as past ones, but I like them. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not going to be one to say, you know, trash about it because I do like it. And I like how it brings everyone together. That's what Disney is supposed to do. You know, the kids these days weren't, you know, the ones who watched Snow White back in the day, you know, so um, I love how it brings people together. So there are a lot of good things and they had a lot of good intentions. Um, some things I don't feel are permanent, so I don't, I'm not going to hate on them because it's good for now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, one thing I, it, I mean, how permanent do you think, or how long lasting do you think the castle will look the way that it does? I like the, the sort of, some of the bunting and the accents, I think are pretty easy to take off if, if they want to um when you're talking about painting a castle I mean it's been painted one time in 50 years so I'm guessing that's there a long time um but we went and saw it and it is pictures don't do it justice it is much it, it they look it looks awesome in pictures it's much better looking in person um part of that is just because you know that you're there seeing it in person but um how long do you think that's staying around and some of the things that they've done in that main hub area? Minimum a year and a half. I mean, you know, it's going to be longer than that. And I actually, I really do like the colors. You know, so many people say that the pink kind of colors lead towards, you know, Sleeping Beauty instead of Cinderella and, and that kind of thing. But look at the photos against the sky. I mean, it just really pops yeah everything about it the the colors the gold the iridescent you know the 50 on it like I, I'm just gonna enjoy every second of this celebration because the castle is fantastic I know that they definitely weren't gonna do that cake again so we were all <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the 25th was like the do not ever <laughs> but and I never got to see that in person so you know it's I don't have any opinions on that I never was here during that time but but I love what they have done now okay and <laughs> something else really cool that they they have done is um they've added 50 um statues and they they selected uh characters from the parks from movies mostly from the movies um but they also included figment um which is a, a mainstay at, at Epcot or, or originally was the only character in Epcot. Um, and I, I wanted to know, like, first your impression of those. And then do you have a running tally of how many you've actually seen? Is that something that, because they're just hidden places and it's, it's fun. Like you, you could just be walking somewhere and all of a sudden you see um, like here's Stitch, you know, um, in Tomorrowland. And he's like, hanging from the side of the building or something doing things that you would think he would do um have you have you tried to find them all or know people who like have um uh, like fun hunts to find them all i have a list and uh i have found many of them and i've taken pictures of many of them as we all do but um, I actually, my husband and I were talking about doing a date day in all four of the parks in different days and just making that our goal is mm -hmm. to find all of the Animal Kingdom ones and all, you know, just that would be our, our fun for the day. Because, you know, when you do live here and you don't have to ride every single thing mm -hmm. every single day, you can just go there and, and play and do the fun stuff like that and not worry about what you're missing in a ride that day. So I absolutely that's on my list to do and I do have a list of all of the statues in each of the parks and I do love them so much so uh that's one thing that I don't want to miss any of them it's been fun to find yeah and I hear other people saying oh look there's you know Woody or you know there's whatever so it's it's fun and that they're life-sized as well so yeah. the toys are toy sized and the people are people sized um so it's it's really fun how serious they took that and how it goes through the years and through the characters, even to the recent 
movies. Yeah. Well, and it, they're, you know, they're specific to parks. Lion King and his friends, or I should say Simba and his friends are in Animal Kingdom. You have Figment and Rocket and Groot and um, uh, Coco and Epcot. Like they're, they're all, and most of the Pixar characters are in um, Hollywood Studios. So, so they split up these characters in a, in a very like, in a way that one causes you to go to all the parks if you want to see them, um, but also they fit well. And in the hub, the main hub of the Magic Kingdom is where you see kind of the it used to be the Fantastic Five, now the I guess is it the Sensational Six, or um, but you see kind of the six main characters, um, Mickey and friends. Um, and so it is really really fun to see, and I wonder how long it will be before their locations are disclosed on the app because right now it's kind of like this fun scavenger hunt right um i wonder in the future because i think those might stay a lot stay around longer um or i hope they do and so i, I wonder if that's something that you know is actually going to be included in the app and you like it's just kind of a fun place to you can find where all of these are um, as opposed to how it is now. Um, so the next thing, anything that I wanted to get your impressions of things that are specific to the 50th celebration, like the statues, like the, um, the redecorating of, um, or the facade of the, the king, the castle, sorry. Um, what are some other things that you have really enjoyed that are at Walt Disney World now because of the 50th celebration um, that, that have stood out to you? I'm gonna tell you probably the most underrated one that I think is the kite show at Animal Kingdom. Okay. I love that. I actually enjoy seeing the, um, the people in the water, you know, like the puppeteers basically. Mm -hmm. You've got several of them riding kind of in, you know, around each other. Some are holding the kite, some are, you know, driving the the watercraft out there. And I just, I enjoy the music because they have two different shows. One is Lion King and one is Jungle Book. Mm -hmm. So they both have great fun music that you're going to be humming all day. <laughs> so it's depending on which show you see, you see the different, these massive size kites. So, and the way they land, I, I think it's fun to watch them land too, because they kind of go boom in the, in the stands yeah. that empty on one side, and then they kind of pull them all in. So I just, I watch all the little details of it, probably more so than some people should. <laughs> I'm like <laughs> looking at the people on the watercraft and the, the, you know, how they land it and all that, you know, stuff. But, but uh, that one is actually really, really one of my favorites. It's just so much fun to see. It happens several times a day. So if you miss one, you can catch one of the other shows. Um, but, you know, as we discussed the statues, we, um, Enchantment and Harmonious are also fun. You know, I love that in um, Harmonious, they have the different languages. Mm -hmm. So it brings in the country of that movie or that you know, thing. And it, it, the music is in that language. So you can, you can hear how it would have been if you were in Paris or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So you can hear their languages. So I enjoy that. Um, a lot of people don't like the the tacos in the water yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know honestly I kind of wonder about that and I always I'm the one that looks at Disney with rose-colored glasses I mean everything they do I feel like I'm gonna love it just because I love Disney and I you know I usually do I might be I might think it could be done a little bit different like I I wonder sometimes why they put those screens there when they probably could have done the same thing on water like they mm -hmm. did um, you know, in some of their other shows and Fantasmic and things, they don't have to have the screen there. You could see it on the water. Um, and then people wouldn't have complained about that being there all day. But, you know, I'm fine with it. It's, yeah. During the day, you'll see the 50th logo. So I kind of wonder what they can do with it. Uh, I, I, I can't take credit for this. I've heard it somewhere. Um, <laughs> but it, it was some panel that I was listening to 
uh, might have been a panel that, that Lou Mangiello was doing. But one thing that would be really, really fun to see if that dream ever came to fruition where Disney and Universal figure out and make decisions on the Marvel characters and everything. Um, it would be really, really fun to turn the big circle or what, I don't know, I, I call it a circle in the middle, um, to turn that into a portal where oh. like all of a sudden then you have just characters walking out um, from time to time, you just various points of the day, you know, you would have some character walking out like they're coming through a portal um and because it is interesting that i mean those are permanent structures they're not uh the the structures from illuminations that essentially could you know they were uh kind of they boated out and then they they boated back behind the scenes like those are permanent structures which kind of tells me that there's a lot more that they're planning to do with film that maybe they don't they they cannot yet like the the technology maybe hasn't caught up with everything that they're planning to do with those because i do they did have a lot of kind of negative kickback from that um that you have now these five structures in the middle of the lagoon that kind of disrupts people's view across the lagoon that they really enjoyed um, and I, I also will say for me, when we went, because we were not local, we were trying to go from place to place. And I have two small kids that, that their definition of everything right now is you ride as much as you can. Um, so we were like going back and forth. And so I really did not pay attention to much of it at all, as far as it, it didn't really distract me because honestly, I was distracted with my phone and trying to get to the next thing anyway. Um, but yeah, there, it is interesting that, that those are there. Um, anything else that you, that has, that stands out that has, you've really, really enjoyed that's new because of the celebration. That was all that I really thought about. Animal Kingdom has some, also, uh, the birds and the puppets and things that mm -hmm. they're doing. Um, just random little extras. Mm -hmm. And Disney is just always known for that. They yeah. like to throw the random extras in for a period of time. Um, and this one's got some some fun additions just like that. You know, I love that um, there's always something new to see. Yeah. And one thing that I, and I don't think this is because of the celebration, but we were there in November. Um, and that is, you know, we were there, I think a week or two after they started decorating for Christmas. And that's the reason I wanted everybody to go to see how it looks at Christmas. Um, and in the animal kingdom, they had this really cool encounter with, you know, the, the people walking with puppets, kind of like they do in the, the Lion King Broadway show. Um, but they were reindeer and penguins yes. and especially my youngest um just like we stayed for probably seven to ten minutes just there because like the reindeer come up and they're interacting with him and they're like obviously you can see there's a person there that's controlling that but the way that the, the attention they take and the detail they take that like this puppet reindeer is moving the way you would think a reindeer would move or a deer would move if you're if you're interacting with them um it, it was it was so neat it was one of the highlights of the trip to see like that interaction between my kids um and th those puppet reindeer and, and and penguins that that happened on the way out of the park and so we just we stopped and, and stayed for a little bit longer for that um there's also one one of the things i have noticed um, and I didn't see it in Animal Kingdom, but we did see it at Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and um, well, actually, we saw it at Epcot and Magic Kingdom. Is the the nighttime lights? How they have now? They have Spaceship Earth lit up, and it's really cool. Like they, you know, they do like a, a show on it and everything. And, yes. 
Um, and they do that in every park with their with their their iconic landmarks, right? Mm -hmm. There's always the Kiss Goodnight and the Magic Kingdom. Um, now they have a beautiful nighttime show when they light up the Tree of Life in Animal Kingdom. Um, and then in Hollywood Studios, I do miss Fantasmic. I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to that coming back. But at Christmas, they had a fun show on Tower of Terror, which was really fun to watch, you know, all the different projections that they did. They have fireworks there as well and, and all of that. But yeah, they have beautiful shows at night. And um, there aren't many different ones as far as Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios right now, just because of the 50th. But the ones that they have there, you know, at holidays, it was really fun to watch both of those. And I had great interactions with those puppets as well. You know, as, as I was walking out of the park one day, it just caught me off guard. It was one of those surprises that I, at that time, didn't know about. And I ended up just standing there for a while watching the puppets and then watching them interact with the kids going by and with all of us. I mean, it, just, it was wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it's so much fun to get those little, like, and that's in a little bit I'll ask you kind of how to tips for how to enjoy Walt Disney World both from visitors and people who are local like yourself um but I think one thing that gets lost for a lot of people is a lot of people think that in order for it to be a successful vacation you have to ride everything you have to watch everything you know you have to do as much as you can and, which really turns into a pretty exhausting experience. Um, and then it's go home. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it's those small interactions that like those are the things that you remember when you get home. Um, the last time that we went in September 2019, um, I remember the kids dancing with uh, the jungle the jungle book characters in animal kingdom and in epcot getting off of the um journey into imagination ride which was always my favorite when i was there and going and playing in the um, imagination pavilion and mm -hmm. while we were waiting for them to meet wreck it ralph and vanellope von sweets and 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 like my my youngest son his interaction with vanellope von sweets and seeing literally going to uh, Country Bear Jamboree five times in a row because that's what people wanted to do. Like, those are the things that you remember. You know, I remember those years past. I don't remember necessarily trying to get from one attraction to another and like the, the rush from get to one to another or, you know, what I was able to get a fast pass for or things like that. Um, taking the taking the 30,000 foot view, what is the significance of Walt Disney World at 50? To you, and then kind of, you think the, oh, the broader significance also. So thinking of when Walt first mentioned that he was building this Florida project to now, this was Swampland. So imagine Swampland turning into what we have today. And it's just absolutely such a special experience it's ever changing all the things that we have now will they'll most likely change you know we might keep a few of the significant things that connect us to the very beginning of the company which i think is very special the sentimental side of it but the fact that it's always growing always ever changing mm -hmm. i like that you know, it means that I want to go back again. I want to see what's different. I want to see what's new. I want to see um, where the the future takes us. You know, there's they're always coming up with more things. I'm just so thankful to be a part of this celebration to see as it evolves and changes. Um, so the 50th, from where it started in Walt's dream to all the Imagineers that are continuing to, to create things, the, the merchandise that we even have, you know, like the statues that we see and we love, 
I saw them in Animal Kingdom this week. I saw a little Simba and it's a statue and it's like a mini fig. Like we can take that little piece that we love of this celebration and we can bring it home and we can remember I was there. And I mean, those are the things that we'll be talking about. Those are those core memories that we'll have for life that, that you know, back 20 years from now, we'll see that, that statue of that Simba and we'll go, oh, that was, that was a great time. Mm -hmm. you know like and, and that's what disney wants to be for everyone they want to be that magical moment that they cherish in their life and it, it is for me it always you know that's probably why i'm here now I, yeah. <laughs> when i'm having a when i'm having one of my tough days or something i'll be like oh let me see if i can get in the magic kingdom tonight you know yeah. that'll make everything better just for a brief moment you know yeah. and that's what it was intended to be yeah you know, those moments and it it's you know the what the company has has meant to people is it, it's far ranging when i talk to students in the class um usually the majority of the students in in the class have not been to a disney park their their experience with disney are the animated movies or um and just to, to kind of to give a glimpse at, at some of the, the generational differences, maybe their classics are, are not the classics that we think of <laughs> there um, that or I should say their introduction to Disney is not, you know, other people's introductions to Disney. Um, I'm always fascinated and I, I chuckle whenever we do like the, the best Disney movie um, because a lot of times the way that I see movies uh, is not the way that they, they see them at all. Um, and, but as part of this, I also want to, I want to get your impressions of, <clears throat> excuse me, the company, while Disney World is 50 years old, the company is about to be 100 years old. Um, and I want to get your impressions on something they announced yesterday. Because one idea or a more sort of the driving idea for building the Florida project was Epcot and Epcot being a living, working city. Obviously, we see what Epcot is today um, because Walt Disney passed away before that could come to fruition. We see what that is now. Um, and then in the, the late 80s and early 90s, you know, Disney had, they formed Celebration um, and then eventually walked away from Celebration, but it still is kind of this nice, I'm not sure it's a quaint town anymore close to Walt Disney World because I think it's, it's expanded a lot. Um, but yesterday they announced that they are going to build communities or they are planning to build communities of, in various parts of the United States. Um, I believe it's called Story Living by Disney. Um, and they, they announced their first one that would be built in California. Um, but then other, they said they are looking at other areas to build these. Um, and as a point of significance, as the company's moving forward and people, they're trying to find ways to engage people with the brand, but people are also trying to find ways to engage with the brand. Um, what do you think of, of this new idea or these plans to build these communities that are very they, they are going to to focus heavily on the Disney show um, at various points in the United States I think it's brilliant <laughs> I do I actually um, for a portion of my career I spent in mall management Okay. And they began to expand into not only having a shopping center, but a living center as well. And so that's one thing that I think is, is fantastic for Disney to be doing yeah. is right now, because there are so many of us. When I lived in North Carolina before I moved here, there, there were people in my workplace and my you know friend groups that were Disney fanatics, just like me. Mm -hmm. And you kind of congregate and you talk about your special things. And, you know, then when I moved to the Orlando area, 
you know, you'll see all the little Disney things outside somebody's home. I mean, to have a little community where you're all sort of like-minded. I love that about my neighborhood. You wouldn't move here if you didn't like Disney because yeah. it's in our backyard. So the fact that, you know, you can talk to people and they know what you're talking about in your passion of your hobby and, and that sort of thing, um, the kinds of things that they would do. Um, we also have, uh, my husband works in celebration. So okay. the, the story of that town is very, very, it, it's got a great history to it. Disney still has a slight hand in certain things because back in the day they created the HOA and they mm -hmm. created how they wanted things done. And a lot of that is still to this day in place. Um, I remember probably in 2005, I hadn't lived here yet, but I just wanted to drive through celebration. And as I was driving through the town, I saw someone on a Segway. I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. You know, just like the, the town of the future. Um, but, you know, I, I do get that a city is much different than a community. You have to have schools or post offices and grocery stores and all of these things, which is what Walt envisioned mm -hmm. with Epcot, experimental prototype community of tomorrow. That's kind of what they're doing. But with a community, you don't have to have all the details of the post office and the grocery store and the schools and things like that. So I think this is just brilliant. I mean, they can have a community. They can have another form of income. It, it is a business. We all know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's a, it, it's, a, it's a real estate investment that... Mm -hmm if they scale it properly is, is massive. And, and if, if this, if this works the way that it can work, I mean, it, yeah, it, it's going to bring in a lot of revenue. Um, it now. But, it, all of the, but you were, you were saying something, sorry. Oh, no, all of the things that they can do with, you know, meetings of, you know, group cruises or, you know, let's all have a, an Imagineer come visit us in our community mm -hmm. center and talk to us. I mean, can you imagine a community that can get a Joe Rody? You know, mm -hmm. Like, if it's connected to Disney, you might actually get someone that's still connected to Disney. Um, of course, he's not anymore, but you know, he's my favorite. <laughs> but, yeah. So if you you think about things like that, you think if it's connected to Disney, maybe we can get someone to come speak with us and how epic would that be to learn from a true imagineer and yeah. you know the the types of people that would be living there some of the 55 plus communities you know the like-minded people I, the opportunities are endless for that yeah. kind of thing. yeah there, there are you said so you said something or you said so many things that brought up so many other questions i'm going to try to get to them quickly um, first, I think you mentioned the like-minded people, and I think one of the really interesting things about Disney is it is that it can be that source of commonality or shared perspective, where it um, we we talked about the last time that that we had a discussion um, outside of this class. What I write about it, it, like group behavior and how groups interact with each other, and one thing that's always been so fascinating to me about a brand like Disney is for the most part it is a positive commonality that people have there definitely are people who you know they'll argue about what's better or, or you know they'll little rivalries or, or things that happen within there but overall it seems like a brand like Disney and, and the love for and the attachment for Disney is something that can bring people together that maybe they don't agree on everything else, but here's something that they agree on. And so when you mentioned that as part of the communities, that really stood out to me because this, you know, if done well, this could be a way far that reaches far beyond just the company and the identity with Disney this could be something that actually brings people together and maybe fosters relationships that, that wouldn't, wouldn't have been fostered otherwise. Um, another thing you mentioned, um, your husband working in cell. Well, let me start with, because I'll, I'll forget. You said you worked in mall management. Um, 
and you said they started getting into like uh, home living as well is that where the concept of a cityscape comes from do you know is I'm not sure if that's where that comes from, but it was a great opportunity to have people, you know, come to the mall, do their shopping, do their dining, walk right home to their apartment or mm -hmm. their condo or whatever it is. Um, it's happening a lot in a lot of cities. And I remember visiting Miami, Fort Lauderdale areas and, you know, visiting several different areas where things like that were happening. In Miami, people come to dine at the mall on their yacht. <laughs> I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. so things like that happen. Um, and it's, it's great to not, you know, if, if someone does have a drink and they don't have to Uber home and they can just, you know, go home safely, which is great too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, to have a community like this, that's, that's Disney minded. It's not like the people who are, you know, drinking and gambling and all that kind of stuff. Everyone has their own little yeah. significant groups, you know, and, and for Disney people to say, you know, oh, what'd you think of that movie? And it's a Disney movie. And, you know, my neighbor may not be into Marvel or whatever, but, you know, you kind of think that this sort of group at least would have a lot of things to talk about or yeah. just random when you, your neighbor your yards are going to have the same little Disney kind of theme to it or, and they don't have to, yeah. but you know, it's just a commonality that a lot of other neighborhoods don't because you never know who's going to move into that neighborhood. But with a name like Disney, you kind of know that some like-minded person is going to be at least open to it. Yeah. Disney is a thing to where a lot of people are kind of open to growing and learning and, and that sort of, I've, I've met the most, you know, doctors and attorneys and, you know, all of these things. And, and I don't know why, but it's just that optimistic, inspiring, reach your goals, learn, grow, do, you mm -hmm. know, those, those types of things are the, what I have found more with Disney than in any other group that I've ever personally been in. Yeah. Well, and so when you mentioned, you, you also mentioned celebration um, and knowing a little bit about the history of celebration. One of the fascinating things to me about celebration was when it started, it was extremely cutting edge. And um, it was one of the first communities to like have <clears throat> like widespread internet and, and things like that. And the purpose was to you lived in celebration and part of your agreement to live in celebration was like you got, I can't remember if it was free internet or, or how much you paid a discounted rate or something, but you were being, you agreed to like, you were kind of being tracked um, to, so the company could learn more about like people, what people were, I, I don't want it to sound like it was like a, a big brother situation, but you know they they were they were very technologically advanced and and kind of ahead of the curve because of some of the work the companies they were working with kind of ahead of the curve of what we see right now with social media and everything that how social media now is used to and cookies and everything are used now to to track people's consumption behavior and everything a lot of that i learned was like a lot of that was present in celebration when it first opened. And <clears throat> I think there was some, maybe some resistance to it then that probably isn't, there's not as much resistance to it now because we as society are just more used to that now. But so I wonder if, I, I mean, the, the possibilities for these communities are endless with thinking about all of the advancements that you have and thinking about, you know, like you mentioned a, an Imagineer coming and speaking. I mean, I wonder if I've had other conversations about what's the future of um, movie theater entertainment and our movie, th what are movie theaters going to look like in the future? Like, so I, I'm wondering, are, are, is this like a, are they going to build movie theaters in these communities and they are going to be Disney owned community or Disney owned movie theaters, because now you can do that. Um, I, I yeah, the possibilities are endless um, for those communities. So I, 
it's really, really fascinating um, to think about everything that could happen from those. Um, and, and, you know, I, I hope that I hope that it happens. I hope that it happens well and in the right way, because that was an, an initial driving force for what was referred to as the Florida project is, is figuring out Epcot and, and kind of what would go into Epcot. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's, it's very, very interesting and very exciting. Um, we, the last time you were here, we, we talked briefly about Genie and Genie plus. Um, and so I don't want to, I don't want to kind of talk about the same thing um, and share some of my impressions of Genie Plus. But um, one thing I think is interesting, the last time you were here, you talked about how you thought Genie Plus and Genie in general would help to disperse crowds and put crowds in different parts of the parks. Um, and I wondered if you could just expand on that a little bit, because it's a really, really interesting idea of how that could work and how it could change the customer or the guest experience. So there, I think Genie and Genie Plus is a great thing. Um, there are over 40 experiences. I think it's 44 experiences in the different four theme parks that are included in the Genie Plus service, which is $15 a day per person. And for that price, Honestly, it's lower than what the theme parks across the street are charging for the same kind of thing. Um, but for that experience, I have been, from the time I set foot in a ride till the time I get off a ride, it's less than what just the standby line would have been. The way they disperse it, they give you options of, okay, I want to ride Pirates of the Caribbean. Well, there's an option at like 1030, I can go ride that ride. So I, you know, click the button and, and go there. Okay, so maybe, maybe Jungle Cruise isn't available at 1030. But, you know, you can ride at a different time. Um, you can go in at 7am if you're a resort guest. So that's before the park opens, you get a little bit of an extra bonus. Mm -hmm on top of the people who are just going in that day and getting it. So by being a park resort guest, um, you can get that little extra. It points you in the direction where you're gonna have a shorter line. I was on and off rides in 20 minutes off of the ride that was a 45 minute standby line. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, not every experience is exactly like that, but that was Christmas Eve when it, the parks were at you know their peak time. Um, and then you can get the a la carte lightning lanes for the very top rides. So say, for example, you don't want to pay $15 for, you know, things that you may not want to do. If you're, if you want to go to the top ride, you can go to, um, you know, flight of passage instead of, you know, spending a $15 for the whole day. If, if everything else is fine with you, you just want to make sure you ride that one mm -hmm. rise of the resistance you know, so it's, it's basically, it's your choice. And people have asked me if I think it's worth it. And my response to them is it depends on how valuable you consider your time. How valuable is your time? Mm -hmm. Because if you feel like it's worth $15 a day, that's your, your consideration, you know, and granted, I, it's $15 a day for every person and they have to think about all of that. But if your time and doing more things is worth that value to you, then yes, it's absolutely, it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, the, the idea of it, it pointing people toward maybe where the lines are uh, a less weight, a lower wait time. And this idea, cause I, I heard it from you and I've heard it from a few other people about dispersing crowds around the park. Mm -hmm is really interesting because it is a, I mean, it's an algorithm that is constantly changing. You know, it's, it's basically, I think of it almost as like, it's sort of like the stock market that like it, it, things are constantly moving up and down. So you might want, you might check and this ride is a lower wait time now. And then because people see that maybe they all rush over here. And so in 10 minutes, you see that another ride is a lower wait time. Um, so it is really, really interesting um, one thing that 
I, I want to ask as a local, um, do, do you use it a lot as a local and do other people use it a lot? And, and is, are there any benefits to annual pass holders with Genie Plus? Like, or do you have to, if you want to use Genie Plus, you have to pay every time that you would go into a park as an annual pass holder? We do. We pay every time for that day, just as everyone else does. But I know some people who do it every time they feel like going and riding particular things. You know, if it's going to be a ride day, then sure, we'll do that kind of thing. Um, Another thing that I love about it is the photos that they have. Mm-hmm. Oh, those the so much fun. The augmented um, reality lenses that PhotoPass has. I mean, I could make myself into the genie, like yeah. it, and so many fun things, like you're eating an ice cream cone or doing all the, the fun stuff. If you're a picture person like me, I'm typically the one who will get the photo pass on a day that I go on something. Of course, it's included with my annual pass, but when I was on the cruise, it wasn't. And I purchased the unlimited photo okay. pass. I just, I love all the different experiences that you have with all of your family in the picture. So um, those photo pass special things that they have on there is worth it just for me. You know, <laughs> I'll do the fun with that and then I'll go do a few things. One thing that I would recommend if anyone does do Genie Plus is understand that, say, for example, if you or I go to the park and you start left to right or right to left, those rides in Genie Plus are not going to necessarily be near each other. So (laughs) you might go from one ride to the other side of the park, which can be a bit exhausting if you have, you know, older or or quite young Mm -hmm. children, Um, they could get exhausted going back and forth like that so for someone like me who's you know energetic enough to run back and forth I can do that Um, but think about that because you know it could add a little exhaustion to family members Um, and again just weigh out yourself and your family and is it worth that to you because you can absolutely choose something else but you know it might just it might move you around a bit, but it'll save you time if you'd like. And then if you have a park hopper, you can go to another park and mm-hmm. go do your favorite things there too. And um, yeah, I, I had an experience with that, that the last day we were in the parks, I, I think I mentioned this last time we spoke that I was intentionally trying to take it easy. So everybody could see this is just a different a way to do the parks. So we were trying to take it slower and, um, and we actually had the first, um, kind of reservation we had was for the Hana mansion, I think at nine 40 and about nine 15 or nine 10, I look and we were over in, um, Liberty square and I look and the boys really wanted to ride big thunder mountain and it was a 10 minute wait. So I'm like, all right let's go so so the boys and I ran over to Big Thunder Mountain so it it, luckily you know we were one land away um not running from Tomorrowland over there um but yeah I did have experience with like all right let's take it slow and then all of a sudden oh hey this is open we got to go right now um so another thing like for someone who is someone who is local as a local person going um you mentioned like you will purchase it if it's going to be a ride day. So I, I imagine that means you don't purchase it every time that you go. Like, um, so are there, how many times do you go to the parks and you don't ride anything? Like you just walk around kind of, as you mentioned, like you and your husband want to do date days where you go and you find all of the statues. How many of those days are there where you just, you just kind of wander around and you don't really have a schedule that you feel like you need to keep. That's one of the beauties of living here. Honestly, (laughs) it happens to me a lot. Actually, just this week on Valentine's day, I went to the magic kingdom only to see if the princesses were with their princes on Valentine's day. Okay. I mean, like 
that was my goal for the day. <laughs> yeah. so I, I walked into the Magic Kingdom, went up to the circle, the hub area where the castle is. I saw the new Adventure Friends cavalcade. I saw Tinkerbell go by and I saw Mickey and Minnie's or Mickey celebration cavalcade with, you know, their beautiful iridescent costumes. And I left like that. That was my, okay. That was my mission accomplished. Yeah. The princesses, I, oh, I did see the princesses too. That was my goal. So they were not with their princes on Valentine's day, but I do think that that might've been because Disney was kind of focusing on this new cavalcade, the adventure mm -hmm. friend like 30 plus characters in that it was it was amazing how it went through time from the beginning of disney and way back to mary poppins and jungle book and hmm. you know all of these things all the way to now miguel from coco was right there in the front of it so it was it that was my goal you know and so there are many days like that we have uh my husband and i every christmas that we have been together we have gone into a disney park at christmas Okay. And our, it, we just like the people watch on Christmas Day. Like how many people go to the Magic Kingdom to watch before parades were canceled? Fortunately, they're coming back soon. But um, it was our thing to see you know, how many people are watching the Christmas parade on Christmas Day. And mm -hmm. we would watch from a far distance because we would let, you know, so many people are in the parks that day. It was just a madhouse right by the street. So we didn't we're not the ones to hog up all the space, but we'll just watch, you know, look how many people are here today. And yeah. I still, to this day, I always think every single day, every day is someone's first time here. Yep. Every day, somebody's walking in there and they're seeing that castle. And it might be my thousandth time, but today is their first time. Yeah. And it just like, it warms my heart. And I don't ever want to get over that feeling. Today is someone's first day. Yeah. And they're going to make their lifetime memories. This might be their only trip. This is huge. Every day, this is huge. So, you know, this entire celebration is filled with that. Yeah. And uh, that's a, that's a great, uh, that's a great perspective to have on it that, yeah, like this is someone's first time here. This might be someone's only time here walking and seeing the castle and, and you know it's always the big reveal if you go in the magic kingdom to see the castle and um it, that is one of the things i really really enjoy is um trying to find that time just to walk around and kind of um for lack of a, a better term get lost in in everything just sort of walk around and, and you you end up noticing things you've never noticed before um, which is really, really fun. It's a really, really fun thing to do. Um, I think, so the next thing I want to ask is, um, for people who are visiting, um, what are two or three tips you have on helping people to celebrate the 50th anniversary to, to kind of get the full picture or full experience of the celebration? One thing I'd recommend to anyone, and it's not just because it's my job, but I would tell people have a travel advisor, definitely, because I live it, eat it, breathe it every day. <laughs> and there's so many things that people have asked me. You know, I just had someone on the phone the other day that says, wait, what? I, I have, I just bought tickets and I have to make a park reservation. Yeah. Doesn't my ticket count as a reservation? No, it doesn't. I need to know, you know, what is your first park of the day? And then that same person thought that they just have to make the reservation for their first park of their first day. And I was like, no, they're your first park of every day. Yeah. And it's, it's just having someone to, you know, poke at you and say, hey, did you make those reservations? Mm -hmm. At 60 days, you know, do you have any dining that you'd like to schedule? Because when you get there, it will be harder to get into there. If you have a family of four, you want to make a reservation for a certain time. You need to have a plan. What park do you want to go to? What dining do you want to go to in the same park? Or if you're going to park hop and I've had people on the monorail think that, you know, Harry Potter is in the mm -hmm. Walt Disney parks, you know, and I'm like, no, you know, you're in the wrong parks for that. If, if that's what you want to see. So just having someone who knows it to ask all of those questions, 
uh, for me, if I don't know the answer, I'm fortunate. I can just go to the parks and ask the cast members myself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so like if someone asks me a random question about, you know, well, do they ever run out of wheelchairs? Well, let me go ask them, how often do you get close? Is it just Christmas? Is it, you know, spring break? I mean, you can't reserve a wheelchair at Walt mm -hmm. Disney World unless you get a third party that you can, you know, there are always options. <laughs> there are always options. But, you know, if, if you if you have someone to ask those questions to and when you're in the parks, ask a cast member, hey, I want to see the princesses. Are they going to be coming around at any time or where can I see them? Yeah. You know, don't be afraid to go up to a cast member. If you see a costume on a person with a name tag, they probably know a little bit about what's going on, hopefully. Mm -hmm. If not, they can point you to the right direction. So um, definitely don't be afraid to talk to people um, in the parks. They're always happy to help. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. The, um, and so to, to kind of close out uh, two more questions before we have our few rapid questions. Um, what are things that you are looking forward to um, that are coming during the celebration that haven't arrived yet? Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. Okay. That's huge for me. I actually um, have booked someone there and I, I get it. A lot of people say that, you know, it's expensive and things like that, but you have to understand what comes with it. Um, a lot of times that's the big thing. It's, it's basically like you're going on a cruise. Mm -hmm. So you've got food included. You have an excursion to Batu, So you have your special entrance into the Star Wars galaxy, into the Hollywood Studios area. So that inclusion in the park is part of your price. You know, mm -hmm. so when you consider the food, the admission to that park, the, you know, all the things that are included, the interactive storylines that you're going to be a part of while you're in that ship, you know, it's, it's amazing the experiences that you're going to be able to encounter. So that one's going to be a very fun one. That opens up in a couple of weeks, so mm -hmm. March 1st. So that will be a fun part of the Walt Disney World 50th. Have, have they done any or are they doing any previews? Because I, I, like I know when they open a, a new land mm -hmm. or open a new hotel, a lot of times they'll do previews for uh, like like for travel agents and for people to to go and because that is an amazing um, is an amazing way to have that word of mouth advertising for everybody um, to to have experience. Have they done any of that yet, or is this com something that is completely like no one is going to experience it until March first? I do know that the Disney cast members who are selling it and working with it have experienced that. So they may have been in the soft opening kind of practice phases mm -hmm. for this. Um, I was working on a guest reservation recently and the person that I was speaking to said that her and her husband had just come back. So she okay. was giving a little bit of tidbits of staying there, which made me even more excited for my client's vacation they're treated like VIPs. You yeah. know, my, my guests who are staying there have a different resort that they're going to after their stay in this galactic star cruiser. But for their entire vacation, I can call this very special hotline and they will help me with any special dining, oh, okay. any, anything, even for their other portion of the trip. Okay. So they told me, you know, call us. There are, it's basically like they're VIPs in a small sort of way, but they're, they're dining, they're um, everything that's included. And even in the stay after it, they're going to be taken care of as far as I can get their bookings from their check-in at their first hotel, all the way through to their end. Um, and it, it's just, it's going to be a great experience. Um, do you, do you know if people staying there, you said they're, they're, they're treated somewhat as VIPs for the rest of their stay. Are they, um, but they don't have access to like the personal tours and no. everything in the parks, right? Okay. 
Not like that, but as far as say, for example, they want to make a dining reservation or they want to make a lightsaber or a droid or that kind of thing. Um, the day that they check in at their star cruiser, they're going to be able to book for the next oh, you okay. know, yeah. of your stay. So, uh, and I can call the special galactic star cruiser line, even for the portion where they're not staying with them. So that that's quite helpful for, for someone because their resort stay in the other hotel is in for a few days so yeah. they get a little extra a uh, bonus from things um their travel insurance can carry over um for a certain number of days before after which disney does so that's always good too but there's just a, a few extra little bonuses yeah. there that i was real excited about um since you brought that up is there um and i don't know if i'm going to ask this correctly how much as a travel agent because you could be a travel agent or you could a travel agent could be calling or a guest could be calling um how much of the show is involved like when you call that hotline um like is it i mean is it is it an extension of the reservation hotline or because it's specific to that is it like part of the show is incorporated into that as well does that make sense? I'm not sure if that makes yeah. sense. For the Galactic Star Cruiser, they have a special line just for that. Okay. So um, there are people who are qualified for just, and they only okay. do that. So it's not like the regular reservation hotlines or anything like that. It's just the Galactic Star Cruiser. So there's just, there's a lot of very special features about this that uh, I'm looking forward to getting more information on seeing it myself hearing people's experiences um it's going to be very exciting yeah yeah and um so then the final question before the the rapid questions we we've seen what the parks look like in the first 50 years and obviously all the parks are not 50 years old but Walt Disney World is because it opened with the Magic Kingdom what what do you think this is going to what are some of the things we're going to see in the next 50 years i'm looking forward to what they're planning because disney continues to buy land around the area mm -hmm. so you know what are they going to be doing with that land are they moving some of their warehouses to that land so that they can build on the land they have now will there be will there be a fifth park will they get the access to marvel and build a fifth park a superhero thing like mm -hmm. there's so many fun rumors and things that we just we hope for that we're just going to kind of throw our little ideas in the mix yeah. <laughs> you know? because i would absolutely love to see that kind of a thing um you know if if they had the ability to build a superhero kind of park and have it like a big roller coaster theme or you know have all sorts of fun Marvel characters walking around, you know, that that would be amazing. Um, but I do, I see them, they're continuing to build land out here, um, continuing to build rides. Tron Life Cycle Run is gonna be wonderful. Um, the other roller coaster that's coming, Galactic Rewind, uh, I just lost the name of it in my head. <laughs> yeah, Guardians <laughs> but, of the, Gal yeah, Galaxy, Guardians of the Galactic. Galaxy. Yes. Uh, but I mean, that's going to start out backwards. It's going to be, you know, the largest indoor roller coasters are cut. Like, just so many things that they're just going a little bit past what's been done before. Yeah. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what's ahead. I'm thinking more hotels are ahead. They had talked about Reflections being another hotel that they're okay. going to be building. Um, they cleared some land near... Um, for wilderness, I've seen, you know, some things started, of course, you know, COVID has slowed down, mm -hmm. since, but in the next few years, I do expect to see another resort, at least okay. idea enough, but. Do you think they'll ever put a resort in any of the parks like they have in some of the, the uh, international parks? You think there will ever be a resort in like one of the four major gates? I don't, that would be a great idea to have their own entrance. Like even with, um, in Disneyland, California mm -hmm. Adventure, 
um, they've got their own entrance from the Grand Californian. That would be a really great perk to stay in a certain place and be able to get into a theme park. I think that with the size of Disney World, that makes it a little more complicated mm -hmm. because which park would you choose? And, yeah. you know, which park would it be easier to do that with? Because, you know, some of them are already, you know, Magic Kingdom's already kind of surrounded in a, in a small sort of way. Um, but, you know, it, it would be great if they could do like their own entrance for a certain park. And wouldn't it be amazing if it was like, you can tell I'm a Marvel fan because I keep bringing <laughs> it up. But wouldn't it be amazing if you had your own Marvel themed hotel, kind of like the Star Wars themed yeah. hotel? own entrance i mean we are doing that in a roundabout way yeah i love how they're doing the excursion to batu like yeah. you're you're on your ship you're on your cruise and you can go up and you can learn how to to steer the ship and you know they're going to be heists and they're going to be all these different things that they want you to participate in it's going to be interactive yeah and and then all of a sudden you go on an excursion and you're in this galaxy and it's, yeah. Yeah. it's so immersive. You just feel like you're in the whole different world. Yeah. So if I can have that in a Marvel theme, oh my goodness. <laughs> I <laughs> we, I actually had someone um, on and we, we were talking about a fifth gate idea. And one of his ideas was a Marvel park. And I, I just, I always go back to if, if, if that can ever be worked out, um, please, I would love to see that because I, I mean, I'm thinking like in California Adventure, where you have a hotel that you are, or if, you know, you, you have an extension of the headquarters, I know that's going to be a, a that's going to be the show building for a ride, but if you have an extension of that where you're, then you're kind of walking out into Avengers campus and everything. Okay, so um, to close out, um, you know, we like to do the rapid questions. And since we were talking about the 50th anniversary today, um, and then I'll actually add one um, because of what we talked about with, with Disney Living. Um, I have five rapid questions that deal with the 50th celebration um, and then with Disney Living. So to start with, um, with Disney living, what is the, the thing that stands out to you the most about this idea to build these communities? Or what's your favorite thing that stands out about this idea to build these communities around the United States? And again, you can, you can just answer or you can answer and give a little bit of background. That's up to you. Basically, the word is right there on what you said, community. It's a community of like-minded people that I believe you're going to have a neighborhood of a closeness that you just don't get anywhere else. Yeah. Okay. What, and so then um, shifting to the parks, uh, Walt Disney World and the 50th, um, what's one or two of your favorite things that you have seen during the 50th celebration or experienced? Personally, I would say the castle. I do love her makeover. It's so beautiful. The colors of it, the way it fits in pictures and everything. It's it's just such a great thing. Um, I love the statues just because of the ability to find them everywhere and just that extra little bonus um, sparkle in, mm -hmm. in a way of putting it. Um, those are some of my favorites. Just those little things like the the extras that they come out with yeah well and and to go with that um what if you if you could pick one thing to stay after the celebration mm -hmm. what would it be i would say probably i like the castle colors okay if they do keep the gold on the turrets and things like, of course they can take the 50 down, but keep some of the extra little gold bedazzled. Mm -hmm. <laughs> castle. I do love how regal it looks. Yeah. yeah. I love the colors and the, the sky photos and stuff. It's beautiful. Okay. Um, if you could oh, add, oh, go ahead. Wait, hold it. I can't even. <laughs> um, 
beacon of magic. My most favorite, probably most favorite thing of all is Spaceship Earth. Keep that yeah. forever and ever yeah. and ever. Yeah. <laughs> How could I have missed saying that? Absolutely. <laughs> Change my answer. <laughs> if, um, well, it, it's, it's two things you want to see stay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you could add one thing, if the company asked you and you could add one thing to the 50th celebration, um, what would it be? If I was dreaming this up and I could add um, some of the Marvel characters okay. in the theme parks, that okay. would, especially around Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, uh, if we could see a Star Lord again, you know, Groot, Gamora, that kind of thing, add some Marvel. And I think they could probably do those. They've had them in Epcot before. Mm -hmm. That would be a yeah. fun addition when Guardians opens up to include that in the 50th. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, Last rapid question, just we talked about it a little bit before, but um, sum it up in, in a few words. Where do you think we go from here? More hotels, which means more people, which would be a better opportunity for a fifth theme park. Okay. <laughs> uh, they're buying land, so I'm hoping that quite possibly we'll have those types of things coming in the future. Um, I know that Walt wanted to build the expansion of space that we do seem to have. You know, we do have so many parks here, 48 square miles, you know, so, um, but he always wanted to be growing and changing. So if we could have a fifth park. It has been a long time since we've had the opportunity to have one. Animal Kingdom was what, 96? Mm -hmm. So that would be an excellent growing and changing hotel and theme park. Okay. And Beatrice, thank you so much for this. Um, it was great to have you back to talk about this and, and great to get a local's perspective on it. Um, for anybody who's listening or any of the people in the class um, that want to contact you or engage with you, what's the best way to do so? Well, I am with MEI Mouse Fan Travel. So my email address is uh, Beatrice.Dennis at MEI-Travel.com. Or I'm on Facebook at uh, Beatrice Dennis. I do have a travel agent page as well, but a lot of my personal adventures, I kind of post on my uh, personal page. Um, I have Instagram is Be a Travel Pro. So it's kind of a spin of my name, B-E-A okay. yeah. Travel Pro. <laughs> so, uh, so that's on Instagram. But yeah, I would absolutely love to meet lots of new friends and love talking Disney. So that's that's my passion. <laughs> okay. All right. And thank you again a lot for doing this, Beatrice. This was, this was a lot of fun. Um, and thanks for giving your take on the 50th anniversary. So have a great rest of your day. You too. Thanks so much. It's always fun to be here. Thanks, Cody. Bye. Bye.